Okay, this is the Midnight Tutor. As always, if you have a problem you can't solve, email it to us, solve at midnighttutor.com. The problem I have today is a difficult integral. It requires outside the box thinking, some creativity, and if you happen to know the trick ahead of time, it makes it a lot easier. But nevertheless, you can figure it out given enough time, so never give up. Part of the interesting thing about calculus is that there are a finite number of variations of problems that you can be given as a test or homework assignment. So if you do enough problems and you cover all these different variations, then no matter what you see, you can always apply the appropriate creativity from memory and save yourself a lot of effort. The problem today, integral of 1 plus 2x divided by the square root of 1 minus 3x minus 2x squared, that whole quantity square root of. So the things that make this difficult are it doesn't easily fall apart. Right? If, we were, if the problem were to easily fall apart, then this thing in the bottom, when we take the derivative of it, we would get the top. Then we would just have integral of du over square root of u, which is a polynomial. That's a simple one. But we don't have that in this case, because the derivative of the bottom, let's say let u equals this whole thing. Then du dx is going to be minus 3 minus 4x, which is different than what we have. Right here we will have a ratio of 4 to 3. Signs are the same. And here we have a ratio of 2 to 1. So not, not good, right? But now can we force it to be the same ratio? Yes. And so that's the first thing. Remember always in algebra, a plus b over c is a over c plus b over c. So you can always take a problem and you can split it into as many pieces as you need to in order to make each piece independently solvable. Now it increases the effort required to solve the whole problem, but it may make the difference between solving it or not solving it. So as long as we can slowly whittle it down, we can break it into pieces and go at it that way. So now what do we have to do to rewrite this so that we end up with something that matches the ratio we want? Well, the ratio is 4x minus, minus, so it's a 4x and it's a 3. Here we have a 2x and a 1. So the, what if we were to multiply, let's just play around with this a little bit. What if we multiply both top and bottom by 2? Uh-oh, the express line for an immediate answer to the solvent midnight tutor question. So I'm going to multiply by 1, which takes the form, in this case, of 2 over 2. And what that gives me is the integral. The bottom doesn't, doesn't change, right? The, the radical doesn't change. We just get a 2 here. But on the top, we get 2 plus 4x. Two right? And if I, in fact, I, if I were even smarter, I would multiply by minus 2 over minus 2. And then I just get a minus 1 half. And then this becomes minus 2 minus 4x. So I'm slowly getting closer to what I want. I've got the 4x term, but I have a minus 2, and we have a dx, of course. So now what can I do next? Well, I can recognize that minus 2, we want minus 3, right? I can recognize that minus 2, now this is tough algebra here, this is a tough part. Minus 2 is equal to minus 3 plus 1. So if I do that, then I can rewrite this problem. So I have minus 1 half. The denominator is still the same, the radical. And we have then minus 3 minus 4x plus 1 dx. So now we're getting close. Now we can break it into two pieces. This is one integral, this is another integral. And this integral then follows that du over u form, right? So this becomes then, and don't forget to carry this minus 1 half through to both integrals. Well, I'll just make it a minus 1 half integral of 1 over 
1 over that whole same expression in the denominator. So minus 1 half integral d over square root of u, this is the same as u to the minus 1 half. We just apply polynomial, it becomes u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. And then we also have this 1 half factor. So that part, I'm going to assume you can figure out. I'm not even going to spend more effort on it. Then we get to this bad boy here. Now let me erase the board so we can go through this. So it's essentially minus 1 half, 1 over this radical. OK, so I rewrote the problem statement. Well, what's left of it anyway, which is this piece where we have this polynomial, the square root of it in the bottom, and the minus 1 half factor. So now we have to complete the square in order to transform this into something that we know how to solve, which looks like this. So we want to get into this form a squared minus x squared. Now x squared probably isn't the best choice because we're going to have an x plus something term here. So maybe square root of a squared minus w squared would be better for what we're looking for here. So how can we do that? Well, let me, the biggest risk at this point is just to make it arithmetic mistakes and get all these factors confused somehow. So let me rewrite this really big, and then I'll go through it line by line as neatly as I know how. So we want something down here. Now, we have this minus. So let me first of all rewrite this as 1 minus the quantity 2x squared plus 3x, just this part inside here. So now we have this 2 term. The x squared has a 2 associated with it. That's not going to make life easy if we want some polynomial that's squared to end up with this. So we want to divide through by 2. Now, since this is under the radical, we're really going to be dividing by square root of 2. So we have to do that to both top and bottom. So I'm going to say 1 over square root of 2 here and 1 over square root of 2 here. So then what that gives us is, in this line, it would be, now the square root of 2, when I bring it under this radical, the other radical goes away. So this 1 becomes a 1 half. And then here I have minus two, uh, x squared plus 3 halves x. Now let's extend this. Let's just do the complete the square right here. So now what thing in the form, remember, when we have a plus b squared, we get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So what thing now is going to be our b term such that we get this 3 halves x as the 2ab? Well, it's going to be 3 fourths, right? Because 2 times 3 fourths is 3 halves. But now 3 fourths squared is going to be 9 sixteenths. So that's what goes here, right? That now has transformed this into an a plus b squared form. Now we subtracted. The minus sign applies to this. So we have a subtractive of 9 sixteenths here. So we have to add one at the same time to maintain parity. So now we can rewrite this square root 1 half plus 9 sixteenths. Well, this is 8 sixteenths plus 9, 9 plus 8, 17 sixteenths. And since we want it to be in a squared form, I'm going to say this is the square root of 17 sixteenths squared, right, minus, and then this becomes x plus 3 fourths. So now, in general, I only remember the simplest forms because I'm kind of a simple guy with a small memory. But I do remember that if you, if you have an a squared minus w squared, the integral of 1 over that is sine of the minus 1 of w over a. I'm going to avoid having this extra step to get to the, the, the simpler term, which would be if we had square root of 1 minus w squared, that's just sine of the minus 1 of w. So what would we have to do here? Well, we'd have to divide through by square root of 17 over 6 to both to this whole denominator to bring it here, and then that gives us a 1. But we can see here right off the bat, we have a squared minus x squared. 
the integral minus one half. So this is going to give us then minus one half, and it's going to be sine of the minus one of w over a. So w then becomes this whole piece, x plus three fourths. dw is dx. We don't have to even put another conversion factor in here. Divided by the a term, square root of 17 sixteenths. plus c. So that then is the final answer. It just requires a lot of tedious manipulation to force this expression into a form that we know how to work with. It's one step at a time. Okay, send all your problems to solve at midnighttutor.com.